All right, class. All right, welcome to week seven. We are rounding third and heading home, guys. Um, this is it. This is where the rubber hits the road. Let's go through week seven. And uh, now let's start with the overview. So week seven overview, I'm not even going to open that because that's pretty much self-explanatory. I do want to take a look at week seven presentation typography. Um, ba, 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 where is that? Right here. Uh, typography and information design. So this is a good presentation, guys, and it gives you three really, really good tips. Number one, stick to the primary categories of a font family. Number two, ba, 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 make sure the theme of the infographic and the typography match. That is critical. Number three is, um, ba, 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 where is it? Number three, number three, number three. Sorry about that, guys. Number three right here. Make sure that everything is aligned properly. Again, critical consideration there. So this is a really good presentation, guys. Take a look at that. I've also uh, reinforced some of the um, critical factors regarding typography in some supplementary resources located in the course announcements. I'll show you that in one second. Okay, so um, then we have... Um, Overview of typography discussion. This discussion is 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 pretty pretty straightforward. Um, so the assignment basically is uh, well. Actually, let's take a look at the discussion. Week seven discussion infographic poster in progress. So this is your critique for your your, your um, uh, in progress poster. So we're going to post these and we're going to comment on these. Um, uh, there's no additional critique on Friday. So this indicates that. Basically, what you're going to do is, in lieu of the second critique, is you're just going to continue to add things to your posters, to your to your project, and and repost. And we'll take a look at those as we move along. Okay, so that leads us to let me get rid of that. That's off the list. And um, I want to talk about this assignment infographic poster part three. And we have got that up here. Week seven assignment infographic poster part three in progress. Okay, this is pretty important, guys. And I really, really want you to go through this very, very carefully because it gives you the exact dimensions and setup instructions for um, the the. Uh, the infographic. So please pay very, very close attention to this and really take a, a close look at the, at the expectations, etc. Okay, that's that. Let's get rid of that. Um, that kind of covers week seven, but I do want to go through the course announcement. So basically what do we have here is there's a kind of a recap with some addition of some new, some new things. So uh, week seven, where we've been, by way of summary, looked at where we've been and where we're going so we can kind of draw a connection between the two, kind of a roadmap um, so that we can connect our past learning activities with our current um, workflow and into our continuing um, development. Okay, so that's where, where we've been, where are we going? All right, there's a couple of things that I want you to take a look at here. This is, we're looking at, at, at production again this week a little bit, but three questions you really should be asking yourself as you work. Is the information able to be easily understood? able to be easy, easily understandable? That is um, something that's pretty critical. One thing I would recommend here is, is it, while you have your work in progress, show Show people. I'm um, sure your coworkers, your spouse, your kids, your family, your neighbors, your neighbors' kids, whoever you can get to look at this for a couple of seconds, show it to them. Get some eyes on this, guys. Get some reactions. This is our chance to do our own kind of little mini user testing, uh, usability testing, so to speak. And I, I want you to show these two to um, people and note or even record their reactions. That's going to give you a, a, a lot of information to move forward on. Um, one of the really, a neat, really neat technique in, in this kind of basic uh, user testing that you can do yourself is when you show your work to others, note the expression on their face. Okay, if they're reading through intently, that's a good sign. If they're like, kind of like, you know, checking their watch or whatever, that's not a good sign. Conversely, if they're making confusing faces like, what? Or like they're looking at, if they're looking at your infographic and they're going like this, they're going, that's a sign that they don't get it, right? So really want to take all their verbal, uh, visual cues as well as their verbal cues. So when you're done showing your work, ask them, ask what you, what is your reaction? 
What do you understand? What don't you understand? And how do you think this work can be improved? And it's a great idea to run your work by non-designers. I tell this story a lot in my classes. I used to do work for a company. Uh, I, it was, I was doing illustration work for a company that uh, it was a children's clothing line, a, 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 a national children's clothing line. And um, the demographic, well, the demographic, of course, the target market was the parents. They're the ones buying the clothes. But the advertising campaign was kind of um, set towards the kids. OK, so I was trying to really develop these illustrations that were compelling and accessible to a an age of about nine to 14 or so or 10 to, to 14. And I was having a heck of a time trying to figure out, you know, how can I test my my illustrations? How how you know? And then all of a sudden it hit me. I was I was um, sitting in my studio and I thought to myself, well, my neighbor has nine to fourteen year old kids. So I took it. I took the work home. I printed it out. I took it home. I went out to my backyard where uh, the kids are always playing over the fence. I called the kids over. Hey kids, come here, take a look at something. And I showed them the work. And I thought to myself. Oh my God, this is valuable information. They were giving me a hit list that was as com com comparable to a professional. That's, well, I mean, the, the, ver the vernacular was a little different, but the, well, I don't know. I think this boy's hair looks a little weird. And I would look at it and I'd go, oh my God, he's exactly right. So I, I, the point I'm trying to make is get eyes on your work. Okay, it doesn't matter whose eyes, get eyes on your work, preferably somebody from your target market. But let's get eyes on those works. The second thing is, do your graphics make interesting connections? And third, does the information flow logically? That's that's important. Uh, create compelling graphics. This, I, I, I kind of went over this last week, guys. I don't know if you had a chance to look at this. This is one of the best courses I've ever seen on lynda.com or LinkedIn, which are the same. Um, but this is, a you know, let me, let me link out to this. And I might have to uh, sign in which I'll just pause for one second if I do. Um, I, I might be still, still, I'm still signed in. Yes, and the course is right here. So this is it. This is the course, it's fantastic. Data, data visualization best practices. And the neat thing I wanna show you here is the way it's broken up. So numbers don't lie, but visualization do. This tells you what kind of uh, infographics to use. Um, then over here, charts, graphs, when to use what. So this is telling you in what situations do you use what specific graphics. And then this is cool. Uh, oh, well, putting data in the context, that, that's, that's important. But this is great right here. Chapter four, using Adobe Illustrator add visual appeal. This actually shows you how to create compelling infographics. So if you want to create a, a really awesome bar chart, this shows you how to do it. So it's great. I highly recommend that you review this this video, okay? Then we get into the importance of typography. I, I told you a little bit earlier that I ha had some additional resources for this typography section. And as promised, here we are, an intro to typography basics. Now, those of you who have had typography before, don't just blow through this, review it because it's kind of a basic hit list. It's really important. And then we have the ultimate infographic design guide, 13 tricks for better design. There's some videos in there. This is a great resource, guys. Okay, now we have our learning outcomes. We have our tasks and our deliverables and due dates. So business as usual in that regard, right? Okay, guys, as I said, week seven is really, really important, all right? This as as they say, this is where the rubber hits the road. So let's get down to it, guys. Um, let's break it down and 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 set it up and, and let's let's do this. All right. So here it is. I am available this week. Um, those of you who have been contacting me for advice, instruction, etc., anything, you know that you're not waiting for me for a response. I mean, you're not waiting on me. I'm pretty good about getting right back to you. Sometimes within a matter of hours. So the reason I say that is because if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm more than glad to provide ample uh, clarification for anything that might happen to come up. All right, guys, again, welcome to week seven. Here we are. I'll see you guys in class. Thank you.